To a certain extent, hitting onto a winner first time out isn't always the most impressive thing. The real art is in doing it again. The threat has to be bigger, the spectacle more spectacular. It's like the ideal is offering an undiluted beef up remake with enough new material to make it all fresh. Sadly, there are more disappointing superhero sequels than there really ought to be in the single defining genre of the last decade or so. It's a wonder so many franchises even survived. I'm Simon from WhatCulture.com and this is the 10 worst comic book movie sequels ever. Number 10, Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3 is yet another piece of compelling evidence in the case against studio interference in filmmaking. Sony decided they needed to give fans venom, but then also had him joined by Sandman and a new Green Goblin just to make sure Raimi couldn't possibly hope to balance it all. The result is a crowded mess with hyperactivity issues that delivers on precisely none of its individual parts or the whole. And as a final insult to the studio's crowd-pleasing manifesto, Venom is reduced to being an emo nightmare, making Peter Parker dance his cringy-worthy way around New York and develop a new fringe. That's not adding complexity and darkness. That's a f***ing teenager crying for attention. Number 9, Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance When Columbia announced their plans to revive the Ghost Rider series just five years after the first movie proved to be a hilarious dud, eyebrows were raised. But the idea to hand the reins to Crank's directors Neville Dine and Taylor actually looked to inject some confidence into the project. Surely they'd be able to channel the comic batch spirit of their Jason Statham starring actioners and make Ghost Rider as fun as it was silly. Nope. The pair failed to improve on the first Ghost Rider, though the CGI was great, hampered by a terrible script, undeveloped characters, and Nick Cage going fully off the scale crazy. It still made some money. That's no indication of anything. Number 8, Iron Man 2. Iron Man caught lightning in a bottle when it launched the MCU, thanks to a combination of strong storytelling, excellent casting, and the charisma of Robert Downey Jr. Inevitably, the follow-up was even more hyped, particularly as it was to add Mickey Rourke and the always excellent Sam Rockwell as new villains. Fortunately, all of the film's good ideas, like Tony's dark spiral into alcoholism and depression and the idea of villains, were lost in uncharacteristically sloppy fashion as Jon Favreau made easily his worst film. On reflection, it feels like the work of a disaffected director answering to his paymasters. Whatever the case, it remains one of the biggest low points in the MCU. Number 7, Kick-Ass 2 After Mark Millow and Matthew Vaughn's excellent adaptation of the Kick-Ass comic managed to make enough money to warrant a sequel, the hype for the follow-up jumped up several notches. And there was the added kicker of Jim Carrey playing a larger-than-life pantomime character as usual. Unfortunately, the film as a whole is a mess, fudging pretty much everything that made the original good. Vaughn left as director and along with him went his subtlety that was the fine line kick-ass had tethered itself to moral decency with. While the first was a smart commentary on superhero movie conventions, the sequel was juvenile, wrong-headed, violent nonsense without an idea of morality at all. It's vulgar and distasteful in all the wrong ways. Number 6, Superman 3. As long as there are comic book blockbusters, there will be comic relief characters, and that's fine when they're well written. Unfortunately, way too often they're given way too much focus, ruining the balance of films and distracting from the main event. That is very much the case with Superman 3. Most of that comes down to Richard Lester, the man who profited when Richard Donner was kicked off Superman 2, who wasn't fit to serve the franchise. In place of Lex Luthor, he brought in three daft villains, failing to make any of them as interesting as when Superman goes grumpy and fights himself. And that scene is not good. Number 5, Thor The Dark World On paper, hiring Game of Thrones' veteran Alan Taylor to replace the brilliant Kenneth Branagh for Thor The Dark World should have made for a great sequel. Fortunately, the glum, bland result is a distant leader in the race for the worst MCU movie stakes. The good things are predictable. Loki is great and having him reimagined as some sort of MCU Hannibal Lecter is delightful. And the war scenes are good, but that's about it. This whole film was a mess. Ruins good villains, turning them into Doctor Who Monster of the Week, and the switch in tone to Poe Face Misery is not welcome at all. Number 4, Batman vs Superman Like even the worst comic book movies, Batman vs Superman occasionally does flirt with greatness, and it does have its moments, particularly in the ultimate cut. But ultimately, it's a disappointment follow-up to Man of Steel. Even with multiple seminal comic books to draw from, and the addition of an excellent new Batman in Ben Affleck, the film has a major problem with restraint and tone. Sure, there is a commitment to spectacle, but having it so dark is just dumb. A bullish agenda to serve aesthetic and style over the audience's experience. Number 3, Superman 4. Here's all the indication of how good Superman 4 is. It's not just classed as one of the worst sequels ever, or one of the worst comic book movies ever, but as one of the worst movies 
ever made. There is something to be said for the return of Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor, but unfortunately he's saddled with his version Scrappy-Doo, or in this case his nephew Lenny, and a ridiculous evil scheme that ends up unwittingly birthing Nuclear Man. Sure, there's some camp value in that, but when you spend every second this man is on screen wondering how the hell he can be a clone of Superman, and yet look precisely nothing like him, something is wrong. Number 2. Batman and Robin It's almost too easy to bash Joel Schumacher for what he did to the Batman movie franchise, particularly as he seems to acknowledge what he did wrong in hindsight. Given the rather unenviable task of reinventing the movies with a more family-friendly tone, with the agenda to sell more toys, he went way too silly and turned absolutely every character in Batman and Robin to jokes. He hadn't even done that poorly with Batman Forever, which gets way more hate than it deserves, but the follow-up reads like a case against good taste. He turned the super costumes into fetish pieces, transformed Dr. Freeze into a walking catchphrase, and turned Batman into a Punch and Judy sideshow. And I'm not afraid to tell you, this is one of the worst films in history. Number 1. Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer The Fantastic Four movies have never been good. Even the first big budget one was pretty mediocre, but it made so much money a sequel was inevitable. Encouraged by that success, the studio decided to go bigger and bolder, introducing iconic Marvel villain Galactus, but then turning him into a great big nasty cloud. Yeah, that's terrifying. It's just not fun at all and it fails to live up to almost everything you'd want from a Fantastic Four movie. And that dance number is the single most cringeworthy thing in cinematic history. Know of any other comic book sequels that were terrible? Let us know in the comments below and then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can even come tell me on Twitter at SimonMiller316. I'm Simon from WhatCulture and I'll chat to you again soon.